Good morning. morning. It's a joy to welcome all of you to our Lord's Day worship, and we hope the service is a blessing to you. For our announcements, we are so grateful for those who helped out in the adventure yesterday and those who participated. And we wanted to announce that for Secret Santa, which is our um, heating ministry, the uh, the fundraiser earned $544.50. So we're thrilled with that. And for Trickle Bee Cafe, $238. So we've done a lot of good just in one day, and we're so thrilled to announce that. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Joan. Okay, thank you. So the Peninsula Singers, you'll have two opportunities to hear them next weekend. Any other announcements? Yeah. Speak about Sister Bay program this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Oh yes, Sister Bay Moravian Church is having a program at 4 p.m. tonight. It will be uh, a program of music and uh, is going to be a, um, a fundraiser, so it, it's a free to the public, but there will be a free will offering, so if you can support Sister Bay Moravian at 4 p.m. this evening. Any others? Let us turn our hearts to worship the Lord. The watchword for the week comes from Matthew 3, verse 2. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And now Milo Sherman will be explaining the first two candles of Advent. Last week, of course, we weren't here because of the snowstorm. So Milo will come up and we have our mom will help him. The first and second candles of Advent. Advent means coming, and in this season we prepare for the coming of Christ. One of the ways we prepare for his coming is by making an Advent wreath and lighting its candles to remind us of the gifts Christ brings to the world. The lights from the candles, which grow stronger each Sunday in Advent, reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. The first candle of Advent is the candle of hope. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. The second candle of Advent is the candle of peace. Jesus is our friend and he wants to bring peace to everyone.
please stand and turn to hymn number 267 on Jordan's Banks, The Baptist's Cry. standing and turn to the liturgy for Advent on page 49. Shout for joy, you heavens, rejoice, all the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Rejoice greatly, shout for joy. See, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. you the Lord God of Israel you came to the help of your people and have set them free you have raised up for us a mighty Savior a descendant of your servant David you promised through your holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies and from the power of all those who hate us you have shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and have remembered your holy covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear. So that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. By your tender mercy, you cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. 
to give your light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins so that our crooked ways will be made straight and the rough ways smooth. Gracious, Gracious Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, you come to us with the good news of salvation, but too often we fail to notice. You come to us day by day, yet we close the doors of our hearts when it seems convenient to do things in our own way. We ignore your presence and your leadership. We have failed to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Forgive us, merciful Lord. May we live so that the world will know that you have come. Please be silent. Through John the Baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise. Turn away from your sins, and God will forgive your sins. God, ruler of all ages, graciously you come to us in order that we might come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Help us and all your children to respond to the call of your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you, and even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ. As you chose the people of Israel to hear the promise of redemption through the prophets, may people today believe in your goodwill for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a redeemer in the life death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted, with the poor and the homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experiencing times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. As we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us not despair. We long for you to inspire all the nations and peoples of the world to turn to cooperation and nurture rather than to hatred and destruction. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God, the only God, forever and ever. We'd like for you to hold your place in the liturgy and turn with me to page 239. This is our Hosanna 
Uh, men will take the first part and the ladies will answer. We call this an antiphonal piece. When you get to page 241, you'll see two dots at the end of the first line. That means go back to the beginning. So I think we'll do great on our Hosanna. So if you would stand with me and men, get your voices ready to start. <laughs> you made to our ancestors and have come to the help of your servant people. You remember to show mercy to Abraham and Sarah and to all their descendants forever. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. We praise you, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. To you be glory and power second Sunday of each month we take up a joyful noise offering and this joyful noise offering will be for the secret Santa ministry that takes care of folks in the winter time helps them with their heating bills we usually have the uh, nursery children come up first and then if you'd like to join them uh, if you don't want to join them, uh, the ushers will come around and relieve you of your joyful noise offering. <laughs> Yeah. 
We come to that point of our worship service when we bring our praise reports and our prayer concerns. We want to remember the person who leads Secret Santa. She has been struggling with a long illness, uh, working through it, and we want to support her in our prayers. Her name is Jane. We also want to pray for Dave, a friend of our church who's having some health issues, for Jim, who's in hospice care for uh, cancer patients, Valerie, Charlie, Bill, and Marge, uh, for Stephen, who's going in for a procedure. This is Barb and uh, Ray's son. Are there any other prayer concerns or praise reports? I have a praise report. Yes. I just want to reiterate what Don said earlier about our Advent church. This was the best ever, I think, we had more volunteers, more food, more bakery. We had three tables full, and it all sold. And we had, a I did the counting, we had over 124 people that came and made wreaths, wrapped candles, had a wonderful time, a church tour. I just wanna say this, this, our next generation, is our legacy of our walking a path to God, um, make straight way a highway, and we are doing that for you. So watch us, and you will be wonderful at it also. We are, we're fading away. We need lots of help next year, okay? But thank you, and please be sure and see the beautiful things out in the fellowship room. Yes, thank you, Karen. And you noticed that was a praise report and a sales pitch. <laughs> yes, Angela. Um, prayers for my friend Rosie. Um, in addition to her cancer diagnosis, she um, just found out that her dad's uh, cancer is no longer treatable. Oh, let's remember Rosie and her dad. Yes. Any others? Yes, Laurel. Oh, we're so delighted that Stephen Cox and his wife uh, welcomed Kyla to this world. And we're so thankful for that. Any others? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. 
Lord, we are so grateful that we could be here today, be here to celebrate the wonders of the season, to thank you for coming and for the promise that you will come again to set this world right. We're so grateful for new life. We thank you for bringing Kyla safely into this world. And we ask that you would continue to give her grace and to bring joy to her family. We would remember our friend Jane. as She struggles through this long illness that your power and your <coughs> presence would be with her. You would surround her with your grace and strength that Dave might know that your presence is with him, that your healing mercy sustains him. We're so grateful for the days that you have given to Jim. And we ask that as he walks this final journey, that you will give him strength and peace and joy. We would remember all of those who are undergoing cancer treatments, for Valerie and Charlie, for Bill and Marge. We lift up Rosie and her dad. They struggle together. They wrap themselves in the sorrow that comes with this awful disease. We ask that you would be with both of them, that you would grant them comfort beyond themselves and surround them with loving care. We ask that you would be with Stephen as he undergoes surgery, that he might know that you are his strength and shield. And so Lord, we bring ourselves to you today, knowing that you love us and that you are pleased to answer and hear us when we call. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
that you give to us, and we especially praise you for your son, Jesus. We ask that you would bless these gifts that have come in to further your kingdom. And we ask it in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson is taken from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the reverence of the Lord, he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf, the wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples the nation shall acquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Our New Testament is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.
Our gospel lesson is taken from the book of Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for re repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquench unquenchable fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Lord, I ask that all of my words and the meditations of each of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, O Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Now, have you heard that phrase before? It's usually to help soften the bad news. So most of us will say, give me the good news first, and then give me the bad news. Now, if you watch newscasts every day, they will give you the bad news first, and then uh, they'll spend the last minute or two with some good news so that you don't leave the newscast thinking all hope is gone. But today I'm not going to give you good news or bad news. I'm going to give you good news and better news. And the first good news comes from the prophet Isaiah. He gives a promise, a promise that seems so outrageous and so wonderful, and we hope one day to see it come to fruition. It's the promise that all of creation will be at peace, so there will be no more predator and prey. I would love to go up to a lion and be able to pet it without getting my hand chewed off. It would be a lovely thing. Isaiah said that no one will hurt or destroy in God's holy mountain. And then we read in Paul that the Holy Spirit of God will give us all joy and peace in believing so we can abound in hope. Boy, is that good news. So now I want to tell you the better news. The better news is when we get to John the Baptist and he says, you brood of vipers, repent. And oh, by the way, there's someone coming who's going to baptize you with fire. Yeah, that's the better news. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. It really is the better news, but I guess I'll have to explain how that is the better news. You see, the good news is that God's hope and his deliverance is coming. The better news is that we are partners in all of this. The good news is that God loves creation. The better news is that he has given it to us to care for. The good news is that God really cares about what happens in the minutia of life. God wants us to thrive, and the better news is we can participate in all of that. There is good news and better news. And John tells the people in order to have the better news, we have to repent. And repentance means return. We return to God. We return to our humanity. We return to the way God intended for life to be. That is the better news. We can participate in God's kingdom. We're not passive recipients. We don't just wait for the slings of outrageous fortune to come to us, whether good or bad. We get to participate. And that's the better news that John the Baptist has for us, even for the people he called vipers. Now, the vipers were the religious elite. These were the people that you'd find in the temple. These were the people you'd find in the synagogues. These were the preachers and the teachers. But at that time, they were also collaborating with Rome. And so they were using their position selfishly and to take care of themselves and not the people that they were supposed to care for. And so John calls them vipers. But you notice he didn't send them away and say, don't get baptized. He allowed them to get baptized, but he said, I want you to do something for me. He said, I want you to bear the fruits of repentance. In other words, it's not only enough to say, I want to be baptized and I want to uh, repent of my sins, but it's to turn around and do something about it. And can you imagine if even one of those elitists had gone back a changed man, 
how that would have affected the poor people in his area. He would have been able to lift them up because he would have been acting justly and righteously and with mercy. So it was good news if they listened. What I love about the Christian faith is no matter how awful we've been, no matter how self-centered we've been, we can turn around and we can follow Jesus and we can do justice and mercy and make a difference and participate in the life that God has for us. God is concerned about us. He wants us to thrive. And he wants not only us to thrive, but everyone in our orbit to thrive. And we can do something. I think of the great Saint Francis of Assisi, or Assisi, I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyway, he came from an Italian town called Assisi. And this young man was very self-centered and indulged. He was a person of wealth and a happy-go-lucky kid. And in his 20s, he found Jesus. Now, he had a good life, but he had so much better life after he found Jesus. And all that self-indulgence went away. And he became a man of, of poverty, not because poverty was thrust on him, but because he embraced it so that he could help others. And 800 years later, his influence is found throughout the world. There's a, an order called the Franciscan Order, and these are people who do acts of mercy and justice and kindness every single day. He only lived till he was in his 40s, but his influence was outsized because he found the better way. Sometimes we think that there's so much heartache in the world and there's so many broken people that why do we even bother to participate? And I want to tell you a story from this congregation. Somebody, someone I had met who does not attend here, uh, they were just marginally a part of this congregation, usually in the summertime. But this person came from a family, there were several children in the family, and the parents, the only way I could describe them, were utterly neglectful. And so these children did not have the advantages that a lot of children in our area have. And she said to me, this church made sure that we kids got to camp every summer. She said, this church made sure that we had clothes on our backs and that we had food on our table and they did it in such a subtle way and we always knew we'd be taken care of by this church. Now the parents couldn't give them all the things that we would hope that parents give and could not raise them properly. And in fact, there were times they were homeless because of the neglect. But all of those children became awesome adults, professionals, wonderful parents, because there was a church here that cared for them and that participated in the grace and the mercy and the love of God and helped them to thrive. Part of Advent season is a challenge to get fired up, to be instilled with the fire of God. That is the better news. The good news is that Jesus has come, and the better news is we can participate in that kingdom, and we can lift people up. How will we become the better news this day? Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for the good news that you come to deliver us. And I thank you for the better news that we get to participate in your kingdom, that every day can be a new adventure with you. And so I ask that you would stir us with the fire of the Holy Spirit so that we might impact this world for good. In Jesus' name, amen.
Would you stand with me as we sing hymn number 268, How Shall I Meet You, Jesus? Now may the Lord of peace increase us in love for one another and for all, and may the Holy Spirit strengthen us to become more like Jesus as we eagerly await his coming. Amen. Amen. 